You might know about the rubber hand experiment. It has been done hundreds of times, but has never been logically extended to test the limits of that illusion. A team of young researchers from the School of Leaders in Bali did some never-before-seen variations of the rubber hand experiment. This was a really badass school project. See with your own eyes the crazy stuff you didn't expect brains could really do. We present a clay hand experiment. The idea of our experiment was to test how much more you can trick your brain into feeling that something that isn't you is you. Each rubber hand enthusiast before us repeated the magical ritual, touching a real hidden person's hand and a fake one in a synchronized manner, in the way a person sees only his fake hand. All they ever got was that wow effect of a person suddenly feeling his hand in a non-living object. Some good folks on a retro TV show did a synchronized movement of a fake and real fingers, so the illusion of feeling the fake hand stayed and the person could move his finger and still believe it is a fake finger that is his own. But that was the top thought of extending the experiment. We did all that in our series too and went far beyond. I must say the critically important for our experiment was the fact that our participants were the kids of 7 till 9 years old. In our experiment, the adaptive and open-minded young brains did things I never saw with adult participants. First, we did usual stuff. Synchronization. It went really fast with every kid. Tapping fingers didn't start the illusion, but crossing the line from one side of hand till another did the trick in 100% of times. Each time I did that, they fell into illusion. But then we tried something really new. I slowly added some extra clay to create a long, small finger. Твоя рука? Есть, да? Давай, вот этот палец для контроля проводим. Чувствуешь, да? Он, да? Этот палец чувствуешь? А теперь давай длинный пробовать. Говори свои ощущения, когда попадет. While still feeling the illusion, participant starts to feel her elongated finger. And we tried to move the elongated finger. Чувствуешь, да? А как у тебя такой палец длинный может быть? Не знаю. Но он есть, да? Отрезаем лишнее. Now a time has come to test the cutting the clay finger off. И вот лишнее убираем. Чувствуешь его? Чуть-чуть. Ты чуть-чуть чувствуешь палец, который отрезали? У меня конец моего пальца, как будто он какой-то горячий стал. Ничего себе. То есть ты чувствуешь, что это твой палец до сих пор? Но он отрезанный. Это феноменально. Мы такое еще никогда не делали. Слава Богу, это не порядок. Ага, но ты все равно это чувствуешь. It turned out that cutting of the clay finger didn't cause much drama or pain feelings. But the crazy stuff happened to the separated bit of the finger. And that was wild. Вернулась? И даже отрезанный палец все равно, да? А ну. Сейчас отломается, сейчас отломается палец твой. Oh, no. <смех> У меня как будто тут что-то лежит, вот тут на руке, только на реальной. Ты чувствуешь, что что-то лежит <смех> на реальной руке? <смех> Ничего себе! Чувствуешь? Да, как будто он двигается, холод перемещается. Посмотри, я не трогаю твою руку. I stopped to touch your real arm at all, while continuing to irritate the clay hand. <смех> что произошло? Как это не было? Как будто у меня там холод просто перемещается. Вот так. Вот так. Я а уже... подожди, сконцентрируйтесь. А вот это ты еще чувствуешь? Да. Да? Я тебя больше не вожу. Ты серьезно? Вот. А теперь на нее, верни, верни на нее. Факт, ты чувствуешь? Ты не врешь. 
Боже мой. Я не чувствую предмета, я чувствую другого. Холод вот в этом месте, на руке? Да, а как, если... будто, как будто у меня там холодная глина вот, А вот я пере... сюда переложил. Чувствуешь, да? Здесь. Ага. А сюда переложил. Чувствуешь, да? На твоей руке ты чувствуешь глину. So on this point she was not stimulated for real. It was out in her head. Imagine how far from here we can go if it really works like that. Как будто параллельность в реальность. Параллельная реальность, да? Вау, это что-то новенькое. А так здесь. На пальце чувствуешь? Mm -hmm. На пальце. Мы только что отрезали палец и его обратно приклеили. Давай да, приклеим обратно его. Чтобы. Ну, давай. А как будто что-то помещ... перемещается на пальце. И Ты... холод вот тут вот исчез. Ага. Как будто вот давай, тут что-то перемещается. Я, я чувствую, как будто он удлинился. Он удлинился. Ты да не чувствуешь моих прикосновений? Я не чувствую ваших ага. прикосновений, но я чувствую, как будто пальцы Убираем. Так, ты молодец, держись. Давай. А, у меня как будто длинный палец поднимается. Да что с пальцем? Ты чувствуешь? Где-то там, да? Не, да. Не в обычном месте? Ну, там как будто нету кости, нету этих связок нормальных. Ага. Я чувствую холод, когда его поднимается. Твой палец? That was cool effect when brain used only eyes to create electric impulses to make you think you really feel the clay hand. I bet on some point it can be done to a whole body. Как будто у меня вот такой палец, но я не чувствую его. Я чувствую какой-то холод, когда начинается не настоящий палец. Как будто бы продолжение ауры, да, какое-то? Как говорят, твой меч должен стать продолжением твоей руки. И это у тебя только что случилось. So if you manage to try the same experiment and cut a clay finger off, place it on your hand and even stop stimulating the original hand in the process with the remaining feelings in the clay hand, please feel free to share and show your results. If you have an idea how to further extend rubber hand experiment, leave the idea in comments and we'll make a video about it. That was kid stuff, now about more important and serious things. Why in the world do we need to progress with experiments in attempt to transfer more and more of the eye feeling into the external body in the first place? That is the first step of a long-term journey set as a big goal of our community. To achieve immortality. Yes, you heard correct. To be immortal. To get there as close as possible. There is a simple roadmap consisting of three steps. We need to experiment with robotic bodies and virtual reality to understand if it's possible to fully transfer the feeling of your body to an external object. In a nutshell, it means we are looking forward of synchronizing a human with a full body robot sitting in the same looking location, transferring all senses through a VR headset and sensors of touch and smell. So the human supposedly should feel himself entirely in the external body. Here is a question. After a person and a robot leave the experimental identical rooms and get to different environments outside the room, where will the real person go and how will he feel? I would like to find that out in an experiment. And this is only the first step to immortality. The second step is an AI personal double. The idea of the stage is like this. A large language model can adapt to behave the same as you would. We plan to train an AI bot using all existing data about a single person to behave like them. The goal here would be to get to a 90% chance of this model answering the same questions using the same words as the human it was trained on. Like if a person and a bot asked 
what would you give as a present to your daughter on her birthday next week? And the answer in both cases should be something like I plan to buy her white roses and a new iPhone. The idea is that if AI thinks and acts and responds to anything exactly like you, it will be a sort of certified you machine, soulless electrical impulses construct that thinks exactly like you. You can probably guess now where this is going. We have an external body where you hypothetically can feel yourself. Then you have an AI thinking machine in that robot body that also sees the world around and feels about it the same as you. At this point, there are two almost identical consciousnesses inside that robot body, yours, which controls it in the real time, and AI model in a passive mode, following your actions in the same body, just looking and observing what you do. This is just a synchronizing stage. It is wild to think that hypothetically, at this stage, if your current body is switched off while still transferring your mind through VR and sensors to a robot body controlled by your twin AI, people around would never even notice that you are gone. Sure, only if the robot looks exactly like you. It could walk out of the laboratory and continue living your life, not doing anything you won't do. That gives goosebumps. Now let's look from the bright side of life. At this point, we already have an external body that thinks like you and you can be transferred by an illusion to that body for a moment. What is the missing ingredient here to create the immortal you? Yes, a soul. A soul as your interdimensional ID card. How can you be sure that your soul transfers into the Android 2 when you pass away? It's very hard to detect what a soul is. Nobody confirms it scientifically, but there is a great computational way of detecting it and operating with it. This is the final third stage of the roadmap that might be controversial and is the hardest one to do anything about. Soul is something that identifies you and comes into the physical existence at the start of your life and goes away when you are dead. This is the core belief of any religion. Even if there is no soul at all, the psychological behavior of a human during their lifetime can still be described as a certain soul that has the given sequence of time to live in a certain place in a certain manner, just like your metaphysical portrait. Now let's focus on some features of the soul we can affect. The soul is a keeper of life. If a body is soulless, it is dead. If there is a soul in a body, it is alive in some way. Also, an entity that has a soul must have a sort of free will to affect something. If an entity doesn't have free will, it means it's not conscious and is a part of a bigger structure and is used or affected by something with a free will. So, if there is a soul, it is a keeper of life and a keeper of free will. Now, let's try to extract those two features from the human body. Free will means a person can state something, say and set a goal and make a belief. Here is a thought experiment how to take that out of your guts. Let's imagine a person is recording a 10 second video of themselves speaking to the camera. I'm John Smith. This video is NFT token of my soul. Whoever owns it, owns my soul. What happens now? The person said the truth or false about the idea that they confirm that the soul is the NFT token from now on. It doesn't matter if the person was joking or was serious. What matters is the statement of an entity with a free will. It produces a unique electronic file, a construct that was told to be your soul. Now let's imagine we put this NFT soul on a ledger device. And later, we adjust a special device to it that sends a signal only when the ledger is destroyed. After the ledger is hypothetically destroyed, the signal goes to a device attached to the NFT soul owner. This device is a remote poison injector. And if it gets the signal of the NFT being destroyed, it injects the person and he is back to Brahman. So what does this a bit sadistic thought experiment shows us? 
It shows us that the soul can be extracted by the personal desire of its owner and put away in the form of NFT token in a way it affects whether the owner is dead or alive. It is not much but a point to start a philosophical research and try to combine it with other branches of our study. What we really plan to test is positive effect of extraction of the soul on a ledger device. We plan to collect a focus group of 100 people from around the world who are willing to take part in an experiment and digitalize their soul. No poison applied, no worries. It is just a harmful experiment of collecting souls. We will mint 100 souls, put them on a ledger device and later put it on the altar of sacred Polynesian ancient temple. Expert priests will extensively perform over 15 types of positive rituals, every day protecting those souls and bringing blessings on them, naming the list of soul owners in the prayers, doing it every day for one month period. The idea of this research is to check if the life of 100 participants change during this one month and if the changes are positive. If we don't get any results showing that, it will still be great, showing us that your soul can't be minted, sold and affected by wizards. I think a few people in the world would love to get that confirmation too. It would mean that you cannot really steal a soul and make bad things or good things happen to it, as some ancient religions believe. Your soul is mine. <laughs> So here we are, after dealing with the robotic body and your feeling inside it, creating an AI thinking machine of your personality and extracting your soul in a way like an NFT token or some other symbolic things and putting it inside your new body, we are getting really close to personal immortality. After some period of time of a real-time synchronization of your consciousness and AI robot consciousness, your old mid-body can be finally switched off and nobody will notice. This time probably even you. Welcome to eternity. If this video gets 1 million views, we will buy a full robot hand for $15,000 and do another set of experiments with a soft kid's consciousness, letting children feel external robot hand and we will do the 100 people monk praying for a soul psychological experiment too and many more can't wait to get there see you goodbye to read more about quantum dramaturgy that inspired these experiments check the links in the description